Peace to the family. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, I want to play this little video right quick so I can, uh, what the video is about. <clears throat> there's an argument going on. There's a great debate going on between the Pan-Africans and the indigenous Indians, right, in the YouTube community. This is a two big communities, two big followings. So I'm going to try to mediate and uh, let y'all know what's going on and, you know, and get my prediction on the upcoming debates about this topic, right? I think it's going to be interesting. So let me let, let your boy tell you what's really going on. Maybe he could put it out real clear for you. Try some of what I said. I don't have a problem talking to anyone about this information. I hope that you're going to be respectful. And I hope that you're going to actually have some sources, some information for us to discuss. A lot of people. So that's it, right? I mean, that's part of it. They want sources. All right. So the people in this pan-African community, right? A lot of these people, they didn't went to college and stuff. And a lot of the Indians, I don't know if they went to, they probably, some went to college, some probably didn't. But they're going off more of a feeling and a belief that African Americans are the indigenous Indians, and we always been on this land. All right, but so it gets tricky because the Pan Africans like, yeah, we'll debate you, debate you all day because they know it ain't no real. I mean, not no real, but it's, it's paperwork. But it's very hard to prove that. So they they're down to had a debate all day, and they see that the uh, indigenous Indians uh, community is growing growing so this is why they want to come over here and debate them so people who are in the aboriginal community say i believe that my family is from um is, is native my you see what i'm saying he's saying i believe right it's like going back to church you believe all right can you prove it this is what a debate is about can you prove your claim all right so how are you gonna do that Ooh, it's gonna be tough. Let me tell you, this is what I'm coming up with is you gotta go off the Richter scale, bro. You ain't gonna be able to do this uh in the square contract grid of a formal debate. You gotta get what they would say is you gotta get spooky, you gotta go a little crazy with this. But this is I'm gonna release some information. That I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna be able to use in the debate, but this is the best way, my, my best way I can explain really uh, uh basically an origin story or <clears throat> the creation, which is crazy, uh, the creation of these people that was already here in this land. All right, so this this it's a big mystery, y'all. Uh, but we about to dig into it. We got to dig grandmother into it. told me. Is that your source? Really? Yes. Really. Granny. Great granny. Word of mouth. All traditions. See, this brother right here, he need a book. That's why I'm saying it's going to be hard to prove because everybody is stuck on books. Look, I'm going to give a warning. If you under 18, if you're in school and shit, you probably don't want to watch this video because I'm about to go teetotally off. <clears throat> and the education system probably won't like what the fuck i got to say all right so if you're in school right now probably probably best you just turn this shit out because i'm gonna say some shit it's gonna rock your world so yeah these brothers need books they need paperwork and yeah we indigenous indians man we don't got no we don't know about no books all we knew was, was trees brother all right so let's get the story started richard allen bishop richard allen all right his story, I was talking about this the other day, his story of how he became a preacher. I'm about to play the video so y'all can y'all can get the story. It raised the eyebrow. It was very interesting how he became a preacher, right? He met these people in the woods, right? And I'm like, damn, that sounds like some Druid shit. Oh, brothers and sisters, I got the dig. All right, so Richard Allen, this is one of the first civil rights leaders. All right, he was a preacher of a church. Uh, off in Philadelphia, this uh, yellow fever came and hit everybody in 1793. Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, leaders of a church, and, and, and their church and the black community helped to get rid of this yellow fever that was plaguing uh, the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, 
other cities too. This thing came and traveled from uh South America, right off of the Caribbean, this yellow fever, and it made its way up to Philadelphia, and that's where it hit the hardest was in Philadelphia. And Absalom Jones and Richard Allen and their church and black people helped clean out that disease. All right, so that was big, that was huge. Cause uh these people, right? That we uh that we call them Freemasons, right? Which ain't nothing wrong with being a Freemason. It's just what you do with your power. Who's who's abusing the power? That's what we really want to know. That's what we really want to barrel it down to. All right. So uh yeah, let me play this video right quick. We're working long, grueling days. You look around you and all you see is slavery and bondage and hardship. At age 17, he joined the Methodist Society, which met in the woods around the Sturgis, Sturgis farm. That was really the foundational moment in his life when he, meet he meets these people in the woods from the Methodist church. I'm pretty sure they're wearing black robes, all right, and they're in the woods. Now they're in the woods because nature is going to play a big part of all of this. Nature and the creator, the natural God, the mind of God, right? The mind of El is gonna play a big pivotal part in all of this, y'all. Y'all do, y'all don't even understand. Let's keep it pushing. But yeah, Richard Allen, father, black father of this nation, meets these people in his woods, and I believe they gave him the game right there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down what the game is. Meets these Methodist ministers who are, you know, going through Delaware and preaching the gospel, and his life is converted. He's literally changed. The explanation of scriptures. Literally changed right there. Just changed his life. Meeting these priests, right? And we got to know what the Celtic Druid is. He's meeting these priests. So, in meeting these priests, man, I believe they gave him some game, man, to, uh, control a mass amount of people man that's what this is all about all right so yeah richard allen man as you can see he's the founder of the african methodist episcopal church all right african now where did he get that name from that african here we go let's look up the etymology of african all right old english africanus native or inhabited of africa from latin africanus of africa of african from africa used of white residents of africa from 1815. check that out y'all now we using this word africa right but if you look up the origins of it it was used of white residents of africa of 1815. they planned a trick bag on you and that didn't switch it up and called you african-americans the trick bag was put on you and i believe richard allen was part of it this is the african methodist episcopal church the one richard allen started right there he is founder richard allen 1760 to 1831 origins 1816 grew out of the free africa movement boom Used the white residents of Africa of eight from 1815. They already knew what they was doing. They already knew what they was doing. The trick bag was already in, y'all. Yeah. yeah, that word African. I was like, why? Do, why would he call it that? African Methodist Episcopal Church back in 1816. So yeah, this is the history, All right? Going back the year before, the word had just came out. Talk about the Afri people. Yes, this is, and they was describing white people. If you even look at Africa and look at uh, Europe, ain't not really. I mean, the Mediterranean Sea is is keeping them apart, but that ain't a lot. That's not a lot. That is a whole continent. There's only two continents. If you really look at their maps, all right, there's only two continents. So these people in Southern Europe slash Northern Africa, right? Right along that Mediterranean Sea. It's something about that sea. They cooked up some stuff that they wanted to take up for the whole world, y'all. The whole world. Yeah. All right, let's keep it pushing. Now, he started a church, right? He met these church people in the woods. I'm telling you, these was Druids. 
these were uh yeah priests of the celtic uh and druid tradition all right these are the people that they met they gave him the game they gave him the sauce all right now putting people in churches you got to know the etymology of church you got to know the etymology of church let's run through that right quick let's get that how this religion works and you know how many people go to church how many people go to church and have no idea in the world what the word church means that's an incredible story people go to church you spell church c-h-u-r-c-h but church comes from a scottish word Kirk, K-E-R-K or K-I-R-K, Kirk. So if you're a Christian on Sunday morning in Scotland, you go to Kirk. Or if you're in England, you go to church. Kirk is a Scottish word which can be traced back to because the Knights Templars, when they went on the Crusades for the papacy to the Middle East, they learned a lot of the religion of the Middle East and brought it back to Scotland. And so in the Middle East, there was a worship of a goddess. Her name was Circe, Circe, C-E-R-E-S, Circe or Circe. She was referred to in the ancient Middle East, uh, especially with the, uh, the uh, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, who was big in Carthage. Uh, the worship of the, of the mother Circe, mother Circe. Well, mother Circe becomes mother Kirk, and then later on becomes mother church. But Circe is the basis for Kirk, and Kirk is the basis for church. So go back and look at this Mother Circe, and you will find in Greek mythology, she was able to hypnotize people and take their minds from them under hypnosis and bring them into her house and lock the door behind them. I said these people are under a spell, bro. I don't know how the fuck. I think some people are breaking it. And I believe that's okay. Let me get a whole story. Hebrews, right? The story that's in the Bible about the Hebrews being slaves. All right. What the Bible don't tell you is that the Hebrews is is the ones who cooked up alcohol and medicine. This is what they did. Alcohol and medicine. Alcohol to get you sick. Everybody know. Everybody. Didn't, Pretty sure everybody over 21 and had a drink. You have a drink, you can drink too much, you're gonna get sick. These people, these Indian people that never knew nothing about alcohol or spirits, if they drink this drink and they get sick, they're like, oh, they're thinking they really messed up. They don't know that it's gonna pass over when like you're hungover, you're sick, you're throwing up. They don't know that it's gonna pass. So they're like, they're sick. Oh, guess what? We got the cure too. Here's the mirror cure, the mirror cure. All right. So uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I don't want to get too ahead. But yeah, these people are under a spell, you know, and I believe that's why I want to start it right here with the church. And then magically take their minds from them and then eat them, feed off of them. That's Mother Circe or Mother Circe, Mother Kirk or Mother Church. And that's what Mother Church does. Well, that's what the church does. She brings in people, locks the door behind them, no reading of any books. We don't want to question nothing. We don't want to discuss nothing. Just do what you're told. Write a check and keep your mouth shut and send the church your money. So therefore, Mother Church, Mother Circe, Mother Kirk is, is living off of the people. I'm just amazed at how many people don't see this stuff. And yeah, buddy, Mother Church, Mother Kirk, Mother Kirk, Sirs, the goddess, goddess of sorcery. All right, it don't stop there, y'all. I'm telling you, he met these people in the woods. They had on robes. Come on, man, where the Celtics and the Druids be at all the time, man? They're in the woods, bro. They're in the woods, bro. With their robes on, preaching. But it's about magic. It's going to come down to magic with the K. The magic with the K. Because K is the 11th letter. All right. And if you want to do some magic, you better be working with some 11s. 11, 11. All right. So, yeah. He met these people in the woods. Richard Allen met these people in the woods. I guarantee they were Druids. Look at the Druids, yeah. With the robes in the woods, in the Bible. This is what they do. The Celtics. All right, now we got a, a president 
who is uh Secret Service code name is Celtic. All right, you can you you can see what's going on now and, and take it can tell you history just by looking at what's going on now. So yeah, he ran into the Methodist Society, all right, in which they're also known as the Methodist Rite. They do rites and rituals and and uh sacred uh, passages. But yeah, rites and rituals, all right. And there's a even today, there's a store called Rite Aid, and you can get medicine from I'm telling you, I'm telling you, stay tuned. There's there's a store right now today. You could it's called Rite Aid, spelled just like this: R I T E, Right Aid. They're aiding you in a ritual, right? And this is what these people are doing. We're following their rituals, and all Richard Allen did was playing his stuff, just like how the Boule in 1904, 1904, the Boule was founded. They patterned their uh, fraternity after Yale. This is what these people been doing. But the secret is magic. And that sounds crazy. You ain't going to be able to use that in no debate. That's what I'm saying. This debate is going to be hard to win because it's straight up come down to magic. All right. So, yeah, this is the Methodist, right? The Methodist Society is they the ones that met Richard Allen in the woods. Richard Allen will go on to become a prominent civil rights leader. And, you know what I'm saying? He was running around with uh, Benjamin Franklin and stuff like that. And he's credited as one of the founding fathers of America, all right? Black man. So, uh, yeah, this church and this witchcraft stuff, man. Let's get back to it. So, like I was saying, the Hebrews was the ones who made, which uh, we would call it the witch's brew, all right? So let's just use the witch's brew because I'm pretty sure that's what everybody used to, all right? But the witch's brew is, is the Hebrews. Now, let me, let me say this. There's always been... Well, for thousands of years, anything that's evil, they try to put the women in front of it. All right. But it's really the men behind doing the all the sneaky shit. Okay. With the secret societies and stuff. All right. So now the witches brew, which I'm telling y'all is really the Hebrew. The Hebrews is the ones that brew. All right. Now, hold on. Let me break this story down a little bit about the blaming the witches and blaming women. It goes back to Adam and Eve, right? Because like I said, the name of their God, their Phoenician Canaanite God is El, right? El is their God. Now, the story of Eve, Eve is a God too. She's the first female on earth, allegedly. Eve, her name, if you take it and put it with El, it turns into eve So there's always been this push to make the woman right? The downfall of society when it's really the man, right? The Adam and Eve story is told in reverse. It was Adam munching on the motherfucking animals. Adam, Adam couldn't stop biting the animals. That's why they was kicked out the garden of Eaton. And I'm saying Eaton as in E-A-T-I-N-G. The garden of Eating. Because what they did with this story, this Adam and Eve story, they did two things. They demonized the woman and they demonized fruit. When the stories really should be told in the reverse, the downfall of, of the world started when men start eating the animals. That's where you see this desertification and stuff start taking place because the animals graze the land. They eat the food. They spit the seed out. Same thing men supposed to do. We supposed to eat the fruit, spit the seed out. Boom. Take your foot, cover it up with some, take the, cover that seed up with some dirt. Another tree grows. It's abundance. It's the garden of eating. You will never stop eating. <clears throat> The creator set up a system like this. All right. Now, what man is doing, he's trying to come in and reverse engineer everything. So remember that word, reverse engineer. All right. So now with the witches brew, all right, in church, you have communion. Boom. You get the blood of Jesus Christ symbolically. You get the body of Jesus Christ symbolically. First, you eat the body. Then you eat of the, uh, you drink it from the, the fruit, right? You drink the blood of Christ, right? Which is cannibalism and witchcraft all to the to the highest power but this is the key now when witches put that brew together they usually say a chant before or after they drink it or before or after the person drink it so look this is the chant you drink the communion blood wine whatever you drink that then you say amun or amen 
you giving praise to the sun god all right amen i moon giving praise to the sun god all right so these people are uh taking a part in a, in a rite or a ritual all right taking a drink and saying a chant i moon um or and, and they sing it <laughs> they, they say they say i moon or i main all right giving praise to the sun god i'm gonna say why that's important a little later all right remember that though the sun god and the chant and the spell, right? Because it's a sun spell. That's what it is. That's all it is. It's a sun spell. And I'll show you who these Hebrews is, right? The Druids. These are the ones that brew the Hebrews. All right. And they will make their magic potion. All right. And we still consume the magic potion to this day. It's called alcohol. Alcohol is called, also could be called spirits, right? Alcohol can also be called spirits. Wait a minute. Here we go. Alcohol and spirits. Okay. Now we talk about some Native American people. These is a spiritual people, right? It's a spiritual people. All right. So the Hebrews knew what they was doing. It was on bringing their spirits, the Alku, and that was the trick bag. That's part of the trick bag. But like I said, they made two batches. They will always make two batches. One will be the alcohol. The other is the medicine, or they call it the, mer the mercury. It's a cure. It's a water cure. So the word that, the root word for water is mer or mer. So miracle is mercury. All right. So when they came over here, they didn't come over here with no motherfucking guns and shit trying to fight and shit. Now they came over here with that book and that potion, magic potion. It's all magic, y'all. Now look, what is a native, what is a Native American stereotype? What is a Native American stereotype? It is that they like to drink. How many of y'all ever heard this? Back in the 90s, this was a this was a real big thing. Great Spirit Saloon, got the Indian out here. This was a uh yeah, this is a stereotype. Now I'm, I'm trying to get to why. All right, I'm trying to get to why. This Native American stereotype about them drinking. All right. I told you that happened. I even uh, did a video about this a while back about how how old alcohol is. Alcohol is like six, seven thousand years old. It's been around forever. All right, but it was on that side of the world. Y'all got to remember, everything that we learn come from the other side of the world. Nothing we learn really originates in America. Everything that we learn comes from England. You know what I'm saying? Egypt, Asia, <laughs> or Germany. Everything that we learn. And these textbooks come from the other side of the world. All right. So remember that. Now, in Europe, all the water had got polluted. So for a while there, that's all they was drinking was alcohol. So alcohol wasn't really messing them up like that. That's why they could drink with the drink alcohol with the Indians, wake up and they be okay. But the Indian is fucked up because he's not used, his stomach is not used to fucking tequila. All right. So that was the trick bag. Get them on the alcohol, and then we could get them on that medicine. And then from there, you, once you know, once you get caught up on that uh, hospital train, man, it's hard to get up out of there, bro. It's hard to get up out of there. So, yeah, alcohol affects memory loss. Memory is going to be a big part of this video, too. Memory is going to be a big part of this video, too. Alcohol-related blackouts and gaps. All right, because what are these people arguing about? on the internet they're arguing about history why are they arguing about history because nobody has a memory of what the fuck went on back then but and the, the indians is like well we just know and uh, pan africans is like we need some proof <laughs> and it's gonna be very hard to provide that proof with something that you just you just know inside you just know in your heart man you just got a feeling that this is right all right but i'm gonna try to piece the puzzle together man so yeah alcohol affects memory all right known as memory consolidation 
in a brain area called the hippocampus. Remember that too. All right. So yeah, temporary block the transfer of memories from short term to long term storage. All right. So yeah, alcohol can fuck with your memory. Alcohol is often uh, also in the Bible. All right. Like I said, Hebrews Bible. Alcohol is in there. We know Jesus turned water into wine. Noah was drunk, and his son saw him naked, and then his son, grandson, got cursed or some shit like that. So, yeah, alcohol is a big part of the Bible, too. Now, we don't, I'm going to get back on that Bible here in a second. But, yeah, if you get to drink alcohol, you probably get sick. Then you got to go see the to the hospital, right? And that's the Red Cross, too. That's the cross, too. That's just the church. It's the same thing. It's the church, bro. They had the miracle. The Mark Cool started all these businesses over here. Yeah. It's a trick bag. It's a hustle. Using spirits for the most spiritual people on this earth. Now, also, if you ingest spirits, if you get some unwanted spirits inside of you, what would you have to do? In the modern world, you would call probably somebody from the church. Maybe a Catholic priest, right? He would call a Catholic priest to get the spirits up out of you. Man, oh man. I hope you I hope the connection is, is coming. I hope the synchronicity is there, y'all. All right. Getting sick off the liquor, you gotta go to the hospital. Or unwanted spirits come in, you you gotta call the Catholic priest with the black robe. All right. These people are working magic, my G. Magic. Now, this is that fever, about that fever that hit. All right. And Allen, Richard Allen and Asalom Jones, they came along and, you know what I'm saying, got it together. But I just want to show you all the remedies they were trying to come up with to cure this. Improvise. There was... Let's go. Matter of fact, we're gonna keep it pushing, man. That was the yellow fever, right? So this hit in Philadelphia. You got the, uh, I think in 1984 they had the Philadelphia experiment. All right. Um, Philadelphia is in the Bible. Okay. And when they're talking about Philadelphia. A few uh, a few verses down, you see the synagogue of Satan. All right, so Philadelphia is connected with the synagogue of Satan. Also, it was Phil Philadelphia in that yellow fever. It was also I remember this movie. All right, but yeah, Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington about uh yes getting getting sick in Philadelphia. Great movie, great movie, definitely a great movie. But, uh, man, let's keep it pushing, man. Okay. So he met the Methodist Society, right, in the woods. Now, we got to know who started the Methodist Society. We got to know that. And it would be a guy named John Wesley. Now, John Wesley was a part of the Church of England. He ended up having to leave the Church of England and start his own church, which is the Methodist Society. So one day somebody asked him, did he want to go to America and preach the gospel to the Indians? All right. Now check out where they went to. In 1735, when he was 32 years old, he set sail from England across the Atlantic, where as an Anglican minister, he was going to pastor the British people who had colonized Savannah, Georgia. There was a sudden great storm. At Savannah, Georgia. Is it black down there? What about Shannon Sharp? Shannon Sharp. Oh, Shay Sharp. Skip. Come on, Skip. Oh, Shay Sharp went to Savannah State, Savannah, Georgia. Look at this picture. Check this out. Oh, my God. Now, see, you say Australia Lloyd, right? Because the Aboriginal people, I believe the first one they really wrote about or discovered or whatever was in Australia. All right. I think that was the first people that were named uh aboriginal people all right so this australia lloyd is saying this is like basically um what they got uh homo sapiens and 
shit like that, man. You know, his classification. Yeah, it'll be his classification. But you see right down here it says American. This is a painting or a drawing. Now, what I'm gonna say is paintings and drawings are older than pictures. All right, pictures with a camera. That's new. That's pretty much like after slavery. That's late 1800s. But paintings and drawings, those are usually going to be older. All right. So let's get that out the way. All right. So, yeah, most of us use our grandma. We have to understand that most of us came here during the transatlantic slave trade. And this is what your boy wants to push. He has to push this. He went to Cornell. He got a, he got degrees in Africana study. What did this mean for him if this is all a hoax? He has to fight it. He has to. All right. But my whole thing is we don't have to fight him, man. We know. We just know. Some of us intermarried with Native people. Some of us. That number is actually very small. Often when we actually see people who have certain features, like folks in your family, I'm sure that almost every Black family has this folklore that, you know, we came from Native Americans. Take a look at this picture of your great-grandmother. She has long hair and a long nose. You yeah. Why is that, why is that the story for 90% of African Americans? All right. So this is Absalom Jones. And this is Richard Allen. All right. If you can see, these brothers are both holding books, the Holy Bible. All right. So I said, oh, man, this is interesting. Both of these brothers holding books. I wanted to know where the magic was really coming from, y'all. We're about to get into it right now. All right. So you see them brothers holding books. If you're wondering, the tree produces about 8,333 sheets of paper. But what is this? An average textbook contains about 700 pages. About 30 million trees are cut down to produce textbooks. Why is that important, family? Cutting down trees to make textbooks. Does that seem right? When I say it like that, I'm going to cut down a tree so I can write some shit down to indoctrinate some people but why a tree though why a tree yeah did you know well you know trees produce oxygen if some if a doctor was to cut your head open right now and cut your brain open he ain't gonna see no thoughts in there where are thoughts where thoughts are coming from another dimension you're you're connected to that oxygen helps produce thoughts so being by a tree could help you think what these people did was reverse engineered that that concept of trees helping you think right you just feel better when you're out in nature right these big ass trees they cut down they wanted it to and trees where the trees come from well, there's four elements. And like, like I said, ale is God and mint is mental. So a tree comes from what they would call ale, right? It's part of the elements. It's earth. So it comes from the mind of God. All right. So if I could cut down this tree and reverse engineer it into a book and put my thoughts in it, oh, man, the magic starts now i got everybody hooked on books everybody loves books i even made it so that some people couldn't even read books so they could want to read a book so goddamn bad and get caught up in it so uh this is the magic of a book first of all when you first pick up a book your mind automatically opens up because you want to learn so boom you pick up a book your mind automatically opens up ready to receive the information that's inside this book so that's the that's the first divide right there just picking up the book then you actually got to open the book that's another divide then you got to read the words the words are on a white page and then black ink that's another divide before you even start reading they didn't 
divided your mental into three fragments. Now, the information that's in the book can be implanted in your head. Oh, man. So smooth. And they over here in America cutting down huge fucking trees to turn them into books, indoctrination tools. Now, look, the creator don't mind you cutting down a tree to make a house. Yeah, you need that. But you think the fucking creator wanted you to tear down a tree to make a book to indoctrinate some people? Are you fucking serious? Even in the Bible, this is how, this is why this shit is so ironic. This is so ironic. This is... I don't know. I sure should just had this up here. But y'all know that y'all know this. Y'all know what it is. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye now shall eat of it neither. God said, Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That book, that book, that Bible is the same. Is the that's the tree that they talk. They had to cut down a tree to make that book. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil literally that's what it is god said eat from the tree of life the real life fucking tree that they're cutting down all the damn time to make indoctrination tools that's where the magic started right there let me show you how old this is show you how old this is you go back to thoth in egypt thoth was a god of the moon Show you something right quick. He's a god of the moon. The moon can be half time sometimes. It could be a half moon. Look at 9-11. On that date, guess what the moon was? Half, 50-50, 11. Okay. For magic. All right. And you see his brother got it read out there. Mid, middle is the mid of L. Everything's L, bro. Everything is L. All right. So, yeah. And like that, like that, it's divide, the, the great divide. But the great divide start with the book. All right, yeah. he's the moon god. Sacred texts, mathematics, the sciences, magic, messenger, and recorder of the deities. All right, so if you go back to 3700 BCE, this is the time when they first start writing. This is when they... History starts right there, 3700 BCE, like 6,000 years ago. But we know stuff was going on before then. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to use a little common sense and be like, damn, what the hell was going on before then? Why they don't want to talk about it? They don't want to talk about it because the man wasn't ruling. They don't want to know, they don't want you to know about that time. But, uh, so yeah, Thoth, Thoth, sounds like thought. He writes it down. He writes down his thoughts, his scribes, his scriptures. All right. It all come from Thoth, the Egyptian God, known for magic. Come on, man. It's all right there. It's all right there. Rome, Egypt, and Greece, the big three. Shared information. And the Hebrews got out, and they say the Jews been kicked over over like a thousand countries, bro. Nomads, nomads. All right, so yeah, I showed you Thoth with the moon, and he's a moon deity. He worked with magic, and he's known for writing shit down. Did, we, did I show you that, man? He's always writing shit down. All right, they reverse engineer trees. Because trees help you think, bro. They help you think, bro. So instead of look at this big ass tree right here. Use trees, bro. These people trying to say this tree because they know. These people know. Fucking psychopaths around here, man. Five benefits of planting a tree. Climate, come back, climate. Jesus Christ. Clean the air, 
improve mental health yeah study shows being near trees can reduce stress levels by decreasing your blood pressure and slowing your heart rate improve mental health man this is why they want to get rid of trees look at the highway system all through america the highway system tore up trees tore up trees bro so yeah we keep it pushing man and now this is the tree that they say is at the uh north pole now did they cut that down i don't know man if they did they as they're really some pieces of shit they did that but yeah this is straight up indoctrination tools man trees definitely have properties that help humans out trees is a the greatest representation of uh of the element earth is a tree right so yeah all they did was chop, chop down trees and turn it into books now look this is interesting because a certain kind of tree is used to make a magic wand uh-oh uh-oh a certain kind of tree is used to make a magic wand now look what have i told you <laughs> you don't get there yet let's, let's slow it down here go the druids with their magic wands all right in the woods come on g come on the wood of a holly tree was used by the druids to make magic wands the druids believed that the holly had magical powers, which was why they used it as wood to make magic wands. Now, this is the trick bag, y'all. This is the trick bag. I'm gonna read this whole thing because I want to know. But this is the trick bag because they tell you they tell you about the magic wand, but they won't tell you about the fucking books. Today, certain magicians still create magic wands from wood of holly trees. Do you know how? Do you know why the most popular entertainment industry in the USA is called Hollywood? It has to do with the magic wand and mind control. The controllers are using Hollywood to create movies to cast magic spells on people who are not aware of the power. So this is TV. So in TV, they just said, fuck it, we're going to name it Hollywood. But for books, nigga, come on. I'm too cold with this shit, bro. The American Holly is found primarily in the Southeast United States, Savannah, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, well, because we, if you notice, uh, a lot of this is about Southern people and Southern Indians, all right? Virginia on down. So, yeah, Southeast United States from Southern Pennsylvania. Now, where was Richard Allen from? Philly. Pennsylvania, down to Florida. It grows in moist wooded locations throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. They use the Hollywood <laughs> to make, oh my God, yeah, to make books. The books is the magic itself. It ain't the words that's in it. It's the, well, it's the words that's in it too. But the magic starts with the book itself that's it keep it simple keep it simple all right this is horace man the father of the common school all right what do schools need books you see you see his time uh that he lives right 1796 to 1859 right before slavery he died he made this shit his life works right to improve the school system he even went over to germany to see how they do it he brought that information back here and applied it here, right? And all this happened before slavery ended because this is 1859 when he died. He was elected to the school board in 1837. 30 years later, you got the end of slavery. But they got the school system. Let that marinate. Let that marinate, family. Matter of fact, don't let it marinate. I'm going to let this sister tell you what's going on. Peace. Shalom. Islam. Hotep. Whatever you will accept as, as far as how I'm saying peace, please do accept it. All right. Now, I wanted to make this video because Turn it up. Um, I started studying the Quran in more depth. Uh, you know, particularly I study words. And um, because I've always read the Quran, I read the, even when I was a Christian, I used to read the Quran. I never was scared to go outside of the Bible. That's probably how I 
uncovered a lot of truth. That's good. But anyway, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about was Amen or Amen Ra out of Egypt and how it's now Amen, Amen Ra, it's the son deity. Now I said they drink the communion and basically it's a chant. Is Amen. This is a part of the ritual. This is a part of the mind control. A very relevant in both the Bible and the Quran. Um, but I'll be focusing, excuse me, I'll be focusing on um, the Quran. But I'm going to start it off with a, a scripture from out of the Bible. I'm sorry, before I get into that, I always suggest that um, I my listeners if you feel uncomfortable the way i'm breaking down words and you don't like how i'm breaking down words then you should probably look at one of the other videos i made was called are you under a satanic God? let me let me get this just black fire nation all right black fire nation yeah because uh i might have to go check that other video out that she's giving right now because this 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 information she's about to drop is fire fire that spell and that video i talk about how um, it is particularly words that have majority of the world under a spell because most people don't study etymology. Most people, especially in religion, they don't study the original languages that the book was written in, Hebrew, Greek, Greek or um, Arabic. Even Muslims, a lot of Muslims do study Arabic, but they don't study Hebrew or Greek, which is kind of ridiculous to me, like how the Bible is the foundation of your religion, but yet you don't study Hebrew, right? should be studying all of it all right and so i want to ask that you watch that other video if, if if you don't like how i'm breaking words down also something that muslims say which is going to lead me into amen um they will consistently say that the bible is corrupted the bible is corrupted the bible is the, the torah is corrupted you sound very silly saying it and the reason why is because the torah and the bible is the root of your religion it's the entire yep i i will agree with that all right so let's keep it pushing but yeah you see what she said though words can be magic spells okay we know we know that but uh boom that book is full of grammar grammar another word for grammar let me see if i can pull it up right quick man this is the free african society all right started in philadelphia philly Damn, it's crazy how Philly was. This is crazy. Philly was just in the Super Bowl playing the Chiefs in Arizona. As it's called Arizona, a nickname for Arizona is Aztec State. State, the Aztec State playing the Chiefs, an indigenous Indian team with a black quarterback. Come on, y'all, y'all. Can, we cannot make this shit up. I don't even want to take this down, man, bro. But hold on, wait a minute. Bear with me, y'all. We're on one quick. Grammar and grimoire. That's why I want to pull up right quick. Let's go to the picture, man, because, like I said, I'm about tired of books right now. Yeah, the grammar and the grimoire, a book of magic spells. That's what it is. That's what it is, Em. The grimoire. It's a book of magic spells. This is, this is why these people, they just can't, they can't see it. They. <laughs> They cannot see it, man. They cannot see the game that's being played, y'all. They cannot see it, man. So here's the grammar, right? Let's break it down. The word spelling and spell not only relates to writing letters out to form words. A magic spell and spelling with magic was the original purpose of words, according to Tehudi. Thaw. Thaw. He said it. It's called spelling. Spell. Yeah. Was the he said it, that was the original use of writing like i said 3700 bce they wasn't right before that it was what they said but yeah i kind of believe that because for what i'm gonna cut down a tree i'm gonna cut down god creation that's some evil shit to write down my thoughts it ain't for me to keep it for myself it's for me to spread it around to the community come on bro. to spell is to cast magic energy with a definite purpose. Write and writing is significant as well, for it contains the word write, R-I-T-E, as in ceremony or ritual. This word is usually related to secret traditions, 
utilized to assist one in living magically. Also, the word right is the same sound as right, R-I-G-H-T, or right angles are 90 degrees, a square. This 90 or number nine, speaking in numerology, is found in all sacred geometric angles in some form or another. Yeah, that's, that's, fact, that's fact. We don't want to get too far into geometry, though, but I want you to get that, that quick little grammar lesson, right? But yeah, I want you to, I want you to see, just in case you want to go to see the video, right? Illuminati Congo, called Secrets of Grammar. All right, so let's keep it pushed. Now, like I said, they they take the communion, right? You take the communion. I've took it before too. Take the communion. You drink the communion. You say the chant, Amen. Right? And I said, Amen. I'm in for I'm in Ray. I'm in Ray. It's for the sun god, right? Now I said, let me go to the sun tarot card, right? The 19th card. See what they see if I can find some clues. Bam, found a big clue. Now look, I'm gonna break this down. This is supposed to be Jesus. This is the white horse he's supposed to return on. All right. Now the reason they got him, Jesus, with the sun card is because Jesus is the sun deity. All right. So even not even just saying, "Oh man," even saying, "You giving your life to Jesus Christ, you giving your life to the sun God." All right. So what this is showing you is that the sun God is directly connected to the white horse and jesus christ now the white horse now jesus is representing consciousness the white horse is representing the return remember that in the bible it says jesus is going to return on a white horse now the thing about the white horse that you got to know is there's a white horse inside your head All right, it's called the hippocampus. Greek word hippo equals horse. All right, it resembles a seahorse. A seahorse is a white horse. All right, this is for memory. And what are these people arguing about online, on the internet, on YouTube? Bro, Listen, all you niggas up here post on that shit. Y'all niggas the the problem too. I'm gonna give a fuck. Listen to him. Listen to him. What are they arguing about? History? Why are they arguing about history? Because they lost their fucking memory. Praising the sun god. Your consciousness is affected by the sun. Your subconscious is affected by the moon. Let's pull the moon up. Because if they're using sun magic, oh, yes, you best believe they're using moon magic too, baby. Come on now. Now, what's the moon going to represent? Oh, it gets fearful when the moon comes out. Also, when the moon's out, that's a good time to have sex. All right. And a lot, a big part of the human experience is sex. So don't be surprised. When the moon comes out, usually seeing happens. The ancients used to call the moon sin. All right. Now, look, you see, they got this jackal, African jackal, and an American dog in between the two pillars. All right. Yeah. And it's crazy. We talk about Africa and America. All right. And then I believe this is a scorpion. No, it might be a crab. I don't know. But either way, it's, it's a, it represent one of those zodiac signs, maybe Cancer or Scorpio. All right. But yeah, this is showing fear. Right, because when it the sun goes away, the moon comes out, it gets dark, it gets scary right there. You can't really see shit. That's when the predators come out. All right. So you would need a community or you need a man or you need somebody to fight off these predators and the uh, bad things. Even bad men come out at night. All right. Lunatics. It's where the word lunatics come from, from the lunar power of the moon. This is why they spray chemtrails. I don't think they're dropping shit on us. I just think they're trying to block out the power of the moon because they know. All right. 
it could open up some consciousness. All right. So with the moon controls your subconscious. Sun controls your consciousness. It's everything that you can see. Ain't nothing really hidden when the sun out. But there's a lot of hidden shit. There's a lot of secret shit when the moon comes out. This is why the moon is so big uh, in Jewish culture and Islam and with a lot of secret societies. All right. But yeah, the moon magic. The moon magic is uh, the fear, right? They use fear, but they also use sex, right? To control people. Now, I'm going to use this, right? Just to show you an example of the slick way that they use sex. All right. So, my father's favorite basketball player was the Big O. So, I wanted to go back and see all right, all right, was this same trick played on my father that they're trying to do to me? And they're probably trying to do to my, my son. So, I looked at the Big O. I'm like, okay, the Big O. Well, there's another. The Big O could be used for something else, a nickname for something else, right? And that would be just straight up an orgasm. All right, sex. And the NBA usually come on at night when the moon's out. All right. And yeah, they're using, like I said, sex sales, bro. Sex sales. So yeah, even back when my father played, he had the Big O. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my father was watching basketball. And Will Chamberlain, he was known for like 20,000, slept with 20,000 women. He's whipped the stilt, right? This one I don't even have to be explained. We just know something's up with this name. His name is Magic Johnson. All right. This is using the moon magic, man. All right. To control people. It's, it's straight up magic, y'all. Now, for the indigenous de debate, like I said, you might got to go crazy. You might got to go outside the 33 grids, yo. Now, this is the UN map. Now, the reason I pulled the UN map just to show that it's still Pangea. When you look at it like this, right, and all the flag patterns line up, right, none of that shit line up on the globe, Earth. But, yeah, the UN used the flat Earth map. They got... 33 squares, right? You are locked into a prison. You are locked into the prison. It's controlled by, well, using the 33 squares, you might as well say Freemasons. Let's just say that. All right. So, yeah, it's still Pangea. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be hard. It's hard to tie DNA to a landmass because it, it's still Pangea. All the landmasses are still fucking together. All right. I pulled I pulled up the definition of a uh, continent the other day. Now, pull this up right quick. Matter of fact, it went, took me somewhere I ain't want to go. Well, matter of fact, we're here now. Okay, so this is what I just showed you, right? That's the inside. That's the UN map. Jesus Christ, that's the UN map. That's the inside of the UN map. Now, what the UN map gonna show you is there's extra lands on the outskirts once you get past Antarctica. All right, so this is what we've seen on the UN map, this, this inner circle. And they're saying there's extra lands on the outside circle. Now, if you do great works for the Freemasons or the Jesuits, right, you get to graduate from 33 school. All right, you get to... Freemasons are indigenous servants. If you're not a Freemason, you're just a fucking slave. All right. So being an indentured service, like I said, these people are cut, cutting down trees here, uh, polluting the land, just doing all kind of demonic shit to this inner part of this place. Right. And this inner part of this place has become basically ruled by cities and concrete. All right. Concrete is taking over the natural land, how it's supposed to be. Now, if you do great works for the for uh, the cabal, like Kobe Bryant and Tupac and Elvis, right? And these, these are people that uh, a lot of people don't think is dead, right? And so they don't really got no special explanation for where they at. They say Cuba and shit like that, but you know these people are very famous. So if you uh, yeah, say it one more time, if you do great works for the cabal. You get to graduate from 33 prison. When you graduate from 33 prison, you get to go 
to one of these other places. All right. So this is where Kobe Bryant would be, where Tupac would be. You get to graduate out the 33 prison. And if, if you take your two fingers together with two threes and you put it together, it's like you're trapping something together. That's the 33. The 33 is for the matrix that we're trapped in right here. But you can fake your death and leave about this matrix. And it will take you to one of these other places. Now, the reason why you want to go to these other places because ain't no concrete, ain't no books. You living in fucking paradise. This is why the this is why these celebrities and shit do what they do, is because you can make it out this concrete jungle where man has reverse engineered everything, and then you could go live in peace and with trees and you know all the abundance that you want and not be fucking bothered but you gotta you gotta indoctrinate you gotta you know you gotta play the game man if you want to make it out you gotta play the game bro that's what the boule does it's the boule symbol all right as you can see they got the griffin she's holding her hand over the urn this is symbolizing keeping the secret, and the secret is magic and how you perform it and how you do it and how you can get a mass amount of people, right, to follow you, to follow you, whatever you want to do. But even if you look at the urn, look at that. What is that? <laughs> Come on, y'all. What is that? That's that. They're keeping the secret. The 33 magic. Because this is a magical place. This is a magical place, man. And, and they know that. That's, that's why they, they cut down them trees and made books, man. And I'm, like I said, I, I, my apologies to the school system. I know I'm fucking shit up. All right. So, yeah, this is the Civil War. And I want to show that the Civil War was staged, a stage production, but they just really literally showed me a stage production. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's use it. Because this is, I believe, the Civil War is the most reenacted war of all times. All right. Why? Why do y'all know this story? So, I mean, I guess because it's so close to home and shit, but no, man. I, I wanted to show that because it's going to come up all the wars, the Indian wars and all this shit. So I wanted to get it out there that, man, a lot of wars are staged, bro. We, there's one going over in Ukraine right now. Bro. But uh, anyway, Abraham Lincoln, the one who linked the country back together. All right. He wears the top hat. I said this dude is magical. This is a magical dude right here to do what he did. Right. Magical dude. Where's the top hat? Like a magician. All right. His name is Abraham, like the Abraham religions. All right. His name is Abraham Lincoln. I do believe that is five syllables. All right. Abraham Lincoln. What's his name? Barack Obama. I do believe that is five syllables. Syllables. What am I trying to get to? The five syllables. Because abracadabra. It's five syllables, too. So when you're seeing Barack Obama, when you're seeing Abraham Lincoln, you're really seeing Abracadabra. I'm trying my best to show you where the magic is coming from. And it's been around. Yeah, you say the magic words. You got the top hat. The magic wand. But no, they didn't need the magic wand. They turned it into the magic fucking book using the holly tree. And, and they just. They, they indoctrinated the world, bro. Took over the fucking world, bro. This is a crazy story. The three Abrahamic religions. Oh my God! Here go Prince Hal, right? It's Prince Hal right here. 
let me break this down too because he got this i believe this is a globe earth now if you see the picture of george washington like this george washington gonna have a sun right here and the moon right here all right i don't know why they gave his brother the dumb ass round ball earth but you know let me take my feelings out of it all right so the round earth the round ball earth and this ball right here so this is representing the physical earth and this is representing the spiritual earth like i said it's all dealing with duality at the end of the day there is two worlds and you know this is what they learn man they learn about magic and they teach they give us they give us all the bullshit they give us science and all that shit they learn about flat earth they learn about gematria they learn all this shit bro and they learn magic. They, they know what this world is really is. And, you know, a Freemason is an architect. They want to build. They want to build. And they really, behind closed doors, admire the creator and how he was able to, you know, how everything in this creation, this matrix that we in, how everything just worked together and came together so so beautifully, so lovely. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no Big Bang. The Big Bang happened the night you was conceived. That's the Big Bang. If you about to walk in your apartment and before you walk in, you hear a Big Bang and then you walk in and everything's fucking pristine and cleaner than when you left it. You're like, what the fuck? That's what they telling us with the Big Bang. A big explosion happened and everything came together perfect. You don't think it's perfect because you look at people too much. You're looking at people too much. People ain't perfect. But this world, outside of the people, like I said, you spit the seed out, motherfucking shit grow. That's how this world work, man. How this world work, bro. Yeah, man, please hit the like button for your brother, man. You know what I'm saying? It's Dr. Lorenzo Turner. I thought I seen something interesting about that. Okay, special 20,000 miles through West Africa. He's trying to get people to go to Africa. All right. The trick bag, man. Nobody wanted to go. It's crazy. They have no connections, man. These people have a feeling. They have common sense. You know what I'm saying? We know about the... Uh, aboriginals in australia we know about the aboriginals on hawaii we know damn near every every island the aboriginal people we, we we know who they are so just using common sense you're like well damn aboriginal people would be in america too because the way they try to tell us in school is like what nobody here because even the red indian they said he came from when the Bering strait melted so they try to act like what well, nobody on this land and common sense to tell you land without people serves no purpose and that ain't the way the creator works man. the creator don't leave nothing he don't make mistakes man he don't make mistakes the creator ain't stupid and if you notice they try their hardest to make the creator stupid that's why in the bible they was building the tower, tower of babel they was building that tower of babel to go kick god ass this is how man was feeling about God or they want to let you know but I think behind closed door they, they revere God because like I'm saying you take people out of here the bad people out of here this world is it's fucking perfect man it's a beautiful world we don't want to live nowhere else man shout out to y'all man like comment subscribe to your brother all right share this video man share this video on all your social media platforms man peace soul conscious TV we out love y'all